Now today's project is pretty simple. We have the front wheel done. The wheel stripe worked out great. Time to pull the back wheel and try to get that airbrushed in before the next snow comes. The back wheel should go a little quicker than the front wheel went because we don't have to paint inside the hub. We just need to lay out the stripe, airbrush it, and that's all we're going to do to the back wheel, but we're going to do a thorough cleaning first. Now I always think it's the little details that make a motorcycle personalized or customized, whatever you think. The paintwork is the most obvious, polishing some of the aluminum surfaces, and then the little details like the wheel stripes. And the little personalized touches like embroidering the seat covers I made for this bike and for others. But what, the, what we're going to do, we're going to make some personal gifts later today. Uh, Karen's got some stuff she wants to use a sewing machine for, so it's going to be a great day. And any day like this, when it's really cold outside, the first thing I try to do is be very efficient about, in this case, get that back wheel jacked up. And let's get that wheel pulled off. Relatively simple job. This bike is very easy to work on. And we shouldn't be out here longer than about 10 or 15 minutes. Now step one, of course, is jack the bike up off the ground and pull that back caliper off. It just makes getting the wheel so much easier once that's off. Now, always a good time to just clean the caliper up and see that we've got... Now well, we're about halfway through on the pad wear here. Probably we'll get another year out of those pads. We don't use the back brake that much, but good time to clean that up a little bit before we pull the axle and pull that wheel off. Get into some warm weather. That's just nice. It just get a couple of zip ties, get that caliper up out of the way. Again, just makes pulling the back wheel a whole lot simpler. Again, this is a relatively easy motorcycle to do all this type of work on. And once the chain is off, this will come apart really, really easy now. I want to take this off and clean it, and I want to bring the wheel downstairs and do a thorough cleaning on it. And since for all purposes we have a brand new chain on the bike, the chain is probably only a couple hundred miles. Having this wheel striped, and when we bolt this all back together again, we should be ready for a lot of good miles of riding. And my other small tip, always leave the parts that belong on this side of the motorcycle here. On that side there, there is a shim in that uh, the sprocket carrier. And once these parts are all cleaned up and the stripe is done, putting this back together will be a very, very quick and dirty job. Now before we head downstairs, I always want to show this. Always a good tip. Almost everybody I've shown that to has wound up using it. It's great for getting in all these little tight areas. My philosophy always is, and probably always will be, once you have something apart, you may as well do everything you possibly can to get it clean, because cleaning this once it's on the bike is a lot more work. And by the way, this, this, I also have a degreaser that I bought at Harbor Freight for about nine bucks that I used to clean the driveway. Boy, does it work good on parts like this. So we got two things here. A good degreaser, that's degreased. We're ready to hit some nice warm cellar and a cup of coffee. It's just so nice to get into the cellar and get out of this cold snow. Now, any cleanup job that I ever do always winds up starting with simple green. Back wheel is going to be a lot greasier almost every time than the front wheel, so we'll spend a little extra time on this. And again, the, the trick with all this is just to let it soak in. While it's soaking in, we'll brew up a nice cup of coffee. Simple green if it sits for a minute or so. And then we'll fire up the steam cleaner, get some steam on this. 
having this immaculately clean when I put it back or as clean as I can get it. Important to me, not important to other people, perfectly okay, we can still be friends. Now because this is the rear wheel and there's the chain lube, little dots of chain lube on everything, I'll probably go back and before I even try to steam clean this, take a dirty and old microfiber, get in all the nooks and crannies. So difficult to clean this when it's on the motorcycle. Not impossible, but so much easier when it's up here. And I always laugh about it, but I like working on a clean motorcycle. And I always say to you, working on a brand new motorcycle in a brand new heated dealership where there's a coffee machine right there. Mm, be a lot, a lot more fun than some of the things I have to go through, but, but we always get the job done. And getting the job done is always a very satisfying part of this. And once I've got most of the big stuff off, the most important part, of course, is where we're going to put the tape and where the back mask is going to go. But this will usually do a, a really good job of loosening everything up. Then I'll take some clean microfibers and get whatever I can else out. a side benefit it doesn't really matter it, it helps bring that ice cold wheel up to room temperature because when we put the tape on of course we want it to be warm now the thing with all of this is and again I'm going to do this two or three times because this really does loosen up all down into the little nooks and crannies and little spots that you normally can't get and again, if, if the only time I do this thorough of a cleaning is when I have the wheel off the motorcycle, well, believe me, it doesn't hurt. And then it makes maintaining it the rest of the year or between tire changes or whatever, just that, just that much easier. and crannies you almost impossible to get a rag down there the paint stick that I showed before is useful now once that's done of course and there's there's no point thinking this is the back wheel we'll do the whole thing over again front wheel is a little less grit and grime on it but when you're doing any kind of paint work we can combine that with a nice cleanup and let that soak, have a cup of coffee, and when I come back to final steaming and cleaning, that should be ready then for the tape. Now here's something to keep in mind if you're painting a set of motorcycle wheels or polishing them or working on them or rebuilding them or whatever. If you're on my channel, Windy Space U, and you're on the motorcycle part of the channel, not the airplane part, you can do a simple search on the channel of the word wheels and up will come about a hundred videos of painting and working on motorcycle wheels. A little tip, I don't know. I guess you can do it uh, right through YouTube. I'm able to do it on my computer anyway. Brings up all the, all of the hundred or so videos that deal with motorcycle wheels. Now there's one last thing to do here. Good old prep wall. And I'm, all the spots where I'm going to put tape, of course, I want to be super, super careful. And there's always something on, a, especially the back wheel. But this final step, by not skipping any steps, we're kind of stacking the deck in our favor, I hope. I hope. Wheel is now pretty much up to, uh, to room temperature, which is good. Once this dries up, I'll be ready to start laying out tape. So now we get to the fun part, and the fun part is always part one and part two covered a lot of a lot of little tips. I'm not going to go over them again. This is the third part, probably the last part of this. But 
because we're just trying to pass on information, but I just want to again say, do not use up an old roll of this. This tape has a shelf life. We have used, opened this just a few days ago, maybe two, three days ago. But anyway, what, what happens is it does dry out. And then if it gets in cold weather, it gets really sticky and leaves a residue. So that is one of the tips that's worth putting on here. But um, now it, there's always a way that some people are comfortable doing this. If you have a lazy Susan, that's nice. I don't. I tried doing it in a in the wheel balancer. I, I just wasn't comfortable. And and basically this is the devil I know because I'm I'm used to back masking things that are on a flat surface when I was a modeler. So anyway. Beside the point, the first thing is to lay out the first stripe, and it it just couldn't be any more critical because this one is going to set up all of the stripes. And as I said many times before, here's what happens. I'm going to trim the tail off of this. What happens is every time you do this, you get a little bit quicker and better and more accurate. Well, since I just did this a couple days ago, you would think I'd be a lot faster. I'm still slow, but I there was a point in my life when I did this so often that I really did get good at it, but I'm a little slower now, and there are a million little tricks. Everybody's got their own modeling tricks for laying out tape. I don't want to let the camera run forever here, but basically this first, let me just show this up close. This piece of tape is going to set the edge. And the middle piece that we're going to put in here will eventually get taken away. But this will be an edge. The inner edge, the outer edge, will be an edge we use. So we, we really want to see the defining line. I want to see the, the sun hit that edge. I want to see a little bit of green. Then I want to see the purple. And by the way, if we were doing this with tape, one of the downsides would be we'd never get a perfect paint match. Of course, we have the, the, uh, the paint that's left over from painting the bike. Now, we don't have a lot, believe me we get to get a perfect paint match. That's one of the benefits of doing it this way. So without letting the camera run, I'm going to lay that whole first roll of the whole first rim of tape on there. Again, the first two videos cover this in a lot more detail. Part one and part two. Okay, we have the whole first stripe on. I'm happy with the gap that we have. We're trying to follow that line, get it very accurate. You can pull the tape back and forth a lot of times before you should replace it. Now, the next thing is going to be to lay another stripe right up against this without showing very little, if any, green, but not overlapping it. So it'll be, this tape is the most important one. This is what sets the whole job up. And this second piece of tape is the one that's going to be pulled away. So now all that's left is get the third piece around the total perimeter and pull out the middle piece. Okay, we got the three pieces of tape on, and now the only thing left is to pull out this middle piece. Make sure the tape edge is sitting down there. We'll hit that with some thousand grit paper after we're done back masking it. Look at the stripe from a lot of different angles. Just make sure we have it right. This is the kind of thing you just have to use your eye for. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And, of course, now we're exactly halfway through. We'll flip it over and do the other side off camera. Both sides are done now. It's only time to basically back mask. We only really need about this much, but I'm going to put some paper towels in there anyway. And put some, uh, I have some old postal tape that works great for back masking because it's very flexible. Back mask everything so only the stripe is showing, and we'll be ready to paint. And it actually looks like the sun came out out there today. Wow. Now with everything back masked, the very last thing is just to scuff this up with some thousand grit. And believe it or not, I was thinking it might snow today. It's, it actually looks like it's going to be okay to paint. And I, my thought was if, I, if it was going to snow today, and it definitely is not right now, Every time I say that, it snows. But we really can take advantage of a day that uh, once this is painted, then we just gotta let it sit overnight. Well, that's a good feeling to get that done. That's about all that needs. I'll wipe that with prep wall. We're ready to go. 
Okay, using the Iwata airbrush. Now, of course, the idea is to get three coats about 20 minutes apart. Two coats to go, one to go. Three coats, now that'll dry 20 minutes and we'll mix up some clear, put one coat of clear on top of that, and we're done for the day. Now I found if I put this through an airbrush, one coat just to seal up a stripe like that, it minimizes the edge as opposed to putting three coats on, and there's no reason to, we're not going to buff this out or anything. One coat will give that protection for many, many years. That's going to work great. And as the sun sets in the west, as the snow melts, time to let it dry overnight. And now while our wonderful wheel was drying up, Grammy has a little, little project for me to work on with the sewing machine. So today's little project is we're using our uh, Allure computerized sewing machine to make some personalized gifts for mommy and daddy. How personalized is this baby? <laughs> this is how we do all the motorcycle seats too. It's a funny story, we had this machine for five years and never used it and we started doing motorcycle seats a couple of years ago. Now we use it all the time. Even Glenn's daughter used it. So what these are, these are personal gifts that Karen and I are giving to the kids and uh, a hand embroidered by Grandpa Wendy. Anyway, a perfect ending to a perfect day. Now this morning after a nice cup of coffee, this wheel has been sitting overnight under a heating vent ready to pull the back masking. Always one of the best parts of any job, pulling the back masking off. In this case, we get to see our final, our labor of love. And I'm really hoping because to actually it's, it looks like it's warming up a little bit out there. I'll be able to get this installed today and get some final pictures of the whole, the whole project. It seems like it would be a small thing to add to a motorcycle. It can change the whole look of a motorcycle.
And the last thing before you go out and install this, I want to take a little bit of polish, and this is just a little tiny detail thing. This is, uh, doesn't even matter again what kind of polish it is, just to get this stripe, break the edge on it after drying overnight. That paint is still soft, of course, and it's just, just takes the edge off it. Make it a little bit nicer, which obviously is the goal of everything we do here. Now I'm really looking forward to seeing how the whole bike is going to look with the two wheel stripes matching. The wheels are really nice and clean now. And once I do the other side, that's, that's pretty much going to be ready to reinstall. About moment I've waited for, go out into the tundra and get this installed. Now this again, I've said this a lot of times, this is really a very easy bike to work on. And putting a back wheel on will only be about a five or a ten minute job. And the last thing will be, put the caliper on, make sure everything's clean. I always like to clean up inside there before I put everything back. And once it's all back together, it's going to be a good feeling to know. I really like the way that little detail looks. It's small details, but sometimes it makes all the difference. Now it's a good feeling to get the last of the bolts in. I thought it was a lot warmer out here. I'll tighten these up, put the torque settings on them. And I maybe we'll even have another cup of coffee. Now, of course, all these things are in the eye of the beholder, but to me, that really does add a nice little detail. And it's a very cloudy day. I'm sure on a sunny day, the sun will pick up the metallic and pearl in that stripe, just like it does on the stripe on the paint job. One more job, done on time, under budget, and shared on YouTube. Over a thousand videos. That's pretty cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.